Hey guys, my name's Deb. <laughs> no, it's not. Hey guys, my name's Deb Marnie and I'm from Aussie Mail. Welcome to our Chain Mail tutorial channel. Hey guys, a big hi, hello, welcome. Thanks for popping along and spending part of your day with me. It's great to see you here. Today I'm going to do a weave tutorial that was a request. So um, I'll be showing you today how to make the hoodoo weave. All right guys, let's get straight into it. Okay, so here are some small sample pieces of the weave that we'll be doing today. Okay, so just for the different gauges and ring sizes, this one over here is 14 gauge AWG, which is 1.6 millimeter diameter wire. And the ring ID here is 3 sixteenths of an inch or 4.76 millimeters. The next one is a 16 gauge AWG, 1.2 millimeter diameter wire. Ring ID for this one is 3.5 millimeters. 18 gauge AWG, one millimeter diameter wire. The ring ID, ring ID I chose here was 1 eighth of an inch or 3.18 millimeters. And finally, the 20 gauge AWG, 0.8 millimeter diameter wire. The ring ID here is 2.5 millimeters. Now, just a note, this particular weave is very sensitive, very aspect ratio sensitive. They recommend around about an aspect ratio of 3.2 with a minimum of three. Now, the two sizes that I had um, the most success with was the 14 gauge one here, the 3 sixteenths of an inch. Now this has an actual aspect ratio of 3.13, this particular ring ID that we cut. So this is using the rings that we cut. Other suppliers may have slight variations in their rings. So that's something to keep in mind if you're buying your rings from somebody other than us. So this has an actual aspect ratio of 3.13 and the other one was the 20 gauge version which also has an aspect ratio of 3.13. Those particular sizes uh, wove up fairly easily, not you know too loose but wove up fairly easily and made quite a nice um, chain. The 16 gauge version has an aspect ratio of 3.08 and it was getting towards the tight side. Um, I did struggle a little bit with this one. It makes a beautiful weave. It's beautiful and dense and keeps its shape gorgeously. It is a little harder to work with. Now I would have, my next size that I chose for the 18 gauge was actually three mil ID. And I found that just too difficult to weave. So I went up to one eighth of an inch which has an aspect ratio of 3.3 and I'm finding that towards the loose side. I wouldn't want to go any looser than 3.3 um, but the 18 gauge 3 millimeter ID rings were almost impossible to weave um, doing it this way so I had to go up to the 1 8th. I wouldn't have gone to 3.25. It just would have been, I think, that smidgen too bigger. So that's something to keep in mind as you're doing this weave. It is uh, very aspect ratio sensitive. It uses, if you're a JPL weaver, it uses generally the same sort of rings that JPL 3 uses. Okay, so to make this weave, you start by making a chain that's approximately twice the length of what you need the final piece to be. Now it is easier to it is easy to add to this chain if you do get to the end and find out you need a little bit more. But if you start off with about tw uh, twice what you need, um, then you should be in a good ball ballpark figure. All right. So once you've got that chain, that simple chain together. Fold it in half and find your center ring. And we're actually going to double that center ring up. So we're going to take up another of our rings. We're going to open that up. And we're going to pop them onto our center ring. Okay, so that it's doubled. 
and then once it's doubled I like to put a twist tie through there give us a little bit of a handle if you don't have a twist tie then make something like a paper clip or if you've just got a scrap bit of wire hanging around anything like that will do all right so once we've got our uh, twist tie in place we're going to want to start positioning our rings so that we've got the the middle rings lying flat like that towards us our next rings are sitting on the outside of the following rings so we want to fold the rings so that we've got first first pair sit on the outside second pair sit on the inside third pair sit on the outside etc etc as we go down the piece but what we need to just worry about now are these first two pairs of rings so we want to make sure that we've got them positioned in such a way that the first set sit on the outside of the second set okay like that and then what we want to do is we want to take up an opened ring and we're going to feed that open ring. We're going to come into the middle of our weave. We're going to pick up from the inside out our second ring. We're going to come along. We're going to twist our open ring and we're going to come up through the middle of our first ring. We're going to keep going so that we go through the middle of the other bit of the, the pair of rings and then come down and go through that final ring in our set of four. So just make sure that that ring is still holding its position, that it's sitting inside that first pair there. And then once we've got that, we come in here and we close that ring up. Okay. So getting our center rings back into position. Now we want to flip our work over. Okay. So this means that the rings that were on the outside, that were on the inside, sorry, are now on the outside. And we want to make our next set of rings, our new set of rings, come to the inside. Okay. And we're going to do the same thing again that we did before. So we're going to come to our new rings here. We're going to come inside. We're going to go through that one. Through the previous before. We're going to go through them there. Okay, all the way around and then pick up our final ring again and close that up. Now this is a tight weave. These are very small aspect ratio rings. So it does take a little bit of maneuvering to get them to close properly, but it's well worth the effort. Okay, so there's our second ring placed there. So what we wanna do now is flip our work back to the other side. So this is our previous set of rings that we were working with. They stay on the outside. Our new set of rings, pop in on the inside, we take up another new ring and going from the center out, we pick up our new ring. Going from the outside in, we pick up the previous ring that was used before, going all the way across, picking up the partner ring on the other side, bringing our work around and it just naturally goes into our final ring there okay and then we close that up okay so that's the ring that we just placed we want to flip our work over okay these were the rings that were on the inside before now they're on the outside and we make sure our new set of rings sit on the inside of those Okay, just like that. Hopefully you can see that. Take up a new ring. 
go to our new set of rings here, our loose rings, pop inside, we're going to go from the inside out, pick up that ring, bring it around, go from the outside in to pick up the ring for it, take our work across so that we pick up the pair, the other one there, and then we start bringing our ring around. So this is a tight fit. So we start bringing our ring around and it goes through that final ring in the four. Okay, straight through that. Close that up. And there you go, that's the ring that we just positioned just there. So you can see that pattern coming along. So again, we flip it over to the other side. These are the, the uh, previous set of rings. These were the previous new rings. So they're now the first set. We get ourselves a set of another rings. We make sure that they sit inside the, the previous rings, as you can see there. Okay, see how they're on the inside? So we don't want you to, I mean, you, it's very difficult to, at this stage to have them on the outside. So make sure they sit on the inside. We come into the center of these. We pick up just the one here on the left. So we go from the inside out. Then we turn around and we want to pick up the ring above it. And to do that, we go from the outside in. We then come across and pick up the other ring in that first pair. We bring our work around. Okay so that we can then go into our final ring in our set of four. Okay, just flip that over there so that it goes through and then close it up. Put our piece back into position and that's the ring that we added there. So you just need to keep repeating these steps until you have finished and gotten the uh, length that you require. All right. So I find this last one is the trickiest one. You might need to move that ring around a little bit because as I said, it, it is a really tight, dense weave. Um, so you might have to just move that final ring around a little bit and then carefully come in and close. But that's it guys. That's uh, how you weave hoodoo. All right, guys. Well, that's it. That's our weave tutorial for today. I hope you enjoyed it and you've added yet another weave to your repertoire. If you did enjoy the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up here on YouTube. Share the video if you like. And if you really, really liked our video and you aren't a subscriber already, then consider doing that as it really does help us and it encourages us to keep going with these tutorials for you guys. If you have any comments or questions, don't forget to pop them down below in the comment section. We enjoy hearing from you. And while you're here, don't forget to also check out all the other video tutorials that we have here on our channel. There's uh, videos here for various um, levels of chain mailers so hopefully you'll be able to find something that is useful to you and last but definitely not least guys don't forget to check out the link up here for our store where we sell all the bits and bobs and who knows what's that you're going to need to make this um, tutorial and many of our others all right guys thanks again for popping along and i hope to catch you sometime in the very near future bye